Hello YouTube, my name is Faisal Khan. I'm a banking and a payment consultant. Today, I would like to talk about hyper-local payments. What are hyper-local payments? What does hyper mean? What does local mean? And why do we mean hyper-local payments? In, in the original days when the bank came out, you know, the bank could only make payments within the country. And then, you know, when a bank, let's say, based in Pakistan, wanted to get make a payment in uh, London, they would have a branch maybe in London, or maybe they would have a Nostro account in London, and they could make a payment, you know, through the Nostro and Vostro accounts and so, so forth, so on and so forth. Eventually, the banking network grew, and banks then had, you know, membership banks and or correspondent banks in all the other country. If you ask Citibank to make a payment in Manila, they could do so. If you ask them to make a payment in Cairo, they could do so. They could do so in Addis Ababa. They could do so in Dubai. They could do so in, you know, Johannesburg and so forth, even Rio de Janeiro. And the reason Citibank was able to do this is because they had a network. They had a network of branches or correspondent banks that would allow them to do so. Today, you know, going after maybe 2010 and so forth, when this entire fintech revolution started, well, it started way earlier, but, you know, for, for purposes of our discussion, let's say post-2010, a lot of payment companies have come up. And what they started doing is first they started offering you payment rails. It, you know, you could have access to Swift, you could have access to this and that, etc. And the reason they could do that is because they had access to those banks in those various countries. Now, companies are coming in and saying, hey, listen, if you have 10 payments to make, or let's say three payments, you have to, you're based in London, you have to make a payment to, let's say, uh, in Delhi, you have to make a payment to in Manila, and you have to make a payment in Johannesburg. Now, traditionally, you're talking three different SWIFT transfers in order to, uh, for that to happen. But if I, as a fintech company, already had a correspondent partner in Delhi, already had a correspondent partner in Manila and in Johannesburg, I would just take the money from you. I have a pre-funded account and I would just pay out from there because I am able to do a local payment in Delhi. I would be able to do a local payment in Manila and in Johannesburg. This is hyper-local. This is what means that you now need not do a swift transfer. Rather than costing you $35 or $45 to do a transfer, I could just charge you $10 and because it cost me maybe $1 to make the payment out locally. And now you see the secondary layer coming on top of the banking layer, which is these fintechs that are now uh, uh, setting up their own distribution channels, their own payment network. There are many companies that are doing this. I don't want to name them because you know people will think I'm promoting them. But essentially, what all these companies are trying to do, they're trying to become, you know, they're issuing you a super API. Uh, again, uh, there's a link on what a super API over here is. And they're offering you a seamless way to make payments into all these various geographies that they are present in. And it's hyper local by because you make one payment locally and a payment on the other end is made via the rails provided by the fintech company, which, by, as I said, is riding on the banking network, but it's their own network that they operate. They are basically maintaining small correspondent accounts, if you will, if we can use that term, all in various in, you know, uh, geographies that they are. They have pre-funded accounts. And at the end of the day, or maybe a, a twice a day, or maybe end of the week, or three days, or whatever, they settle amongst themselves just to make sure that all the accounts are replenished and so forth. But that's what hyper-local payments are. And hyper-local payments is the new wave. Why? Because it enables payments to go in real time, or well, near real time, it enables payments to go at a much, much lower, cheaper rate. It enables uh, companies to have access to native payment rails. Today, you don't have to speak in, in, in terms of SWIFT. You don't have to say, hey, well, you know, I'll SWIFT the money to you. You can say, hey, listen, I'll just put it into your M-Pesa account, or hey, I'll just put it into your Bcash account, or hey, I'll just put it into your bank account in Japan, etc. because you have the ability to push those payments. And once we have, have, and once these companies that are making these hyper local payments uh, get more traction, get more customers, the independent you know fintech companies that are already part of a small geographic ecosystem or a small region will then stitch themselves up or join with these companies to further the footprint. And what this does is this consolidates the broken network, the fragmented world of payments. And this is going to be not just a fiat game, it's going to be a crypto game, it's going to be a hybrid game. And this is a very, very exciting times. Hyper-local payments, in my opinion, are really, really going to change the fabric of how we uh, communicate 
and do and, and how we pay and do commerce and trade with each other and hyper local payments are also very very important in the interoperability uh, thing there's a video i did on interoperability of payments you should see up here the playlist it's something you should watch at least once to get an understanding of what i mean by it so hyper local payments are going to be a huge uh, catalyst in making sure that the interoperability amongst different various disparate payment systems comes in and they all stitch together. Anyways, as always, if you have a question or a comment, there's a contact form in the description below. Please fill it out. I'll be happy to answer and review it. Till next time, Faisal Khan signing off.